Hello, pup parents, and welcome to today's episode of the Perfect Pup Podcast. My name is Devin. We're going to answer a question that you've probably asked yourself, at least in your head, if not out loud or on Google or to a friend. When do puppies calm down? There are a lot of factors, and I want to say this. Thinking, or sometimes in our mind we think, oh, when my puppy is not a puppy anymore, they'll be calm and they'll be chill and they'll just do what I want them to do. Like, that's not how it works. Training is of the utmost importance and structure as well, but I do want to dive into some factors that will help determine or can determine when your puppy will start to calm down more. So let's get right into it. Quick story about myself. When I was growing up, I played a lot of sports. I was on baseball team, tackle football. I was playing street hockey with my friends. I was shooting free throws in my, in my, driveway. Like I was always playing sports. And I look back at that now and I think, man, how was I doing competitive activities, high energy activities like this all the time? Right. And you know, now as an adult, I'm on a rec soccer league. I play once a week and I usually don't recover until the next game's about to start. And it got me thinking how similar our puppies are that, you know, we, we look at these at, at kids, human kids. And we see, we say, wow, like, look how much energy they have. They're always ready to go play sports and those types of things. And, you know, it's similar with our puppies where when they're growing, when they're in that, you know, exploratory stage of their life and they're starting to just figure out how to be a dog in society, there's a lot of energy. There's a lot of, a lot of things that are happening. And a lot of that again is because they are growing. And when puppies are growing, they're often getting more food, which means they have more, you know, just calories to expend and to, to have the energy. So that's why puppies are high energy. And let's talk about some factors as to, you know, when your puppy might calm down a puppy calming down. It, it's not just, you're not just going to like wake up and you're going to be like, Oh, my dog's a year old. Now they're good. They're chill. They'll settle next to me when I ask them to like, again, I can't stress this enough. It's about training. Like yes, energy levels will change as your dog grows and, and, and matures. But in our minds, I think a lot of times when we're asking, oh, when is my puppy going to calm down? It's, it's about behavior and behavior modification does not change just with age. I'm going to say that at least a couple more times on this episode, because it's a common misconception that people think, well, if I can just ride out this time, my dog will be more calm. Yeah, they might be, but that doesn't mean they're going to be better behaved, which is what you're really looking for anyways. So a couple of factors here, and, and, you know, there is research on this topic and some of it is better than others. And, you know, there are some factors that have a little bit more, um, I guess, emphasis or, or sway behind them based off of some scientific studies while others, not so much. So gender, it can play a role. Typically females, they, uh, finish growing before males or finish like their growth stages before males, which can help, but by no means is a female dog typically going to be um, you know, more calm than a male dog or earlier, those types of things. So that's not a huge factor, but it can play a role. Um, socialization is important. So just your dog's exposure to other dogs and puppies and understanding kind of what calm behavior even looks like and how to behave in different scenarios, it's going to be super, super helpful. Um, on the note of spaying and neutering. There's a lot of people who you will hear them say, oh, well, your dog's hyper because hasn't been spayed or hasn't been neutered or whatever it is. The, the research on this is, you know, there's specific studies that produced conflicting results, whether spaying and or neutering is going to help a dog be more calm, less calm, you know, change their behavior, those types of things. Generally speaking, the changes that it's going to show is going to be the especially with male dogs, the like sexualized behavior. So wanting to mount, wanting to, you know, chase after other dogs and, you know, marking some of those types of things, those might, um, change with, uh, the neutering, but generally speaking, this, there's not significant evidence to say that spaying or neutering your dog is going to mellow them out. Um, again, with some caveats, certain behaviors will be decreased potentially, um, but generally speaking, it's not, it's not, it's not a solution. Let me put it that way. It's not an answer to your dog's hyperactivity. Um, the other thing that's going to play a role, and we'll talk more about this later on is, is going to be, uh, just routine and training. H how much are you teaching? Are you teaching your dog how to be calm? Are you teaching them what 
calm behavior looks like. Like I said, they can learn that from other dogs and they will, but it's also, it comes down to training and us, you know, painting the expectation of what we want from them and what behaviors are desirable. Um, another factor that can play a role of when your puppy will calm down is going to be their home environment. You know, are there, are there kids in your home that are high energy and always running around? Are there other dogs that are going to teach them proper calming and, you know, kind of normal dog behaviors that are expected of them? Lots of different factors. The biggest factor though, that's going to let you know when your puppy will calm down is going to be breed and size. So I say both breed and size because, you know, breed plays a huge role. A, you know, two dogs that can be similar-ish in size, if I'm way off, like, I'm sorry, but, you know, generally speaking, similar-ish in size, a beagle and an Australian shepherd, right? Um, you know, the Australian shepherd has been bred to have more energy and to be more hyperactive and hypervigilant and to be looking at things and to be going after them and hurting and all those things. So breed specifically is going to make a difference. Uh, the other thing that is going to play a role, and this will be the biggest one and kind of the, I guess, final answer of when do puppies calm down? It's going to be all about the size of your dog. Smaller dogs are going to finish growing earlier than larger dogs. And typically when your dog finishes growing, you will see calmer behaviors and less energy being expended by your dog. They get out of the growth stage. They typically calm down a little bit. So small dogs, it's all ranges. There's no hard and fast rule, but generally speaking, smaller dogs, anywhere from nine to 14 months, they're going to finish growing. Medium dogs, you're looking closer to about a year, give or take, maybe a little bit more up to like 16 months. Large dogs, you're going to be pushing more on the 18 to 24 months and um, really big dogs like Great Danes, those types of dogs. Um giant breeds, they are going to sometimes push three years old while they're still growing. Uh, and so those factors are going to play a role. That's probably the biggest factor. Like if I had to synthesize this entire episode into one sentence answer of when do puppies calm down, it is mostly influenced by their size and when they're done growing. But again, I'm going to say your dog calming down, it's there will be less energy often as they get older, but that is not, that is not going to that does not mean they're going to be a calm dog. That does not mean that they are going to be a dog that acts appropriately or how you want them to. That is going to come down to training and structure. So here are three quick tips on how to calm a puppy or an adult dog. The first thing, and this is so, so, so important, physical and mental needs need to be met. That means your dog needs proper exercise. Again, you need to talk to your vet and make sure you're giving safe exercise for your dogs because or for your puppy, because things like jumping, um, you know, those can cause issues for joints if your dog is still growing, those types of things. So consult your vet. But, you know, generally speaking, your dog's needs, they need to be met. Um, and what I mean by that too is, you know, looking at breed specific things. If you haven't listened to the episode with Kim Brophy, where we talk about how every dog has different needs and, you know, these innate desires, you need to be meeting those. Like for me, my Labrador retrievers, I need to play fetch with them. And, you know, when they were puppies or even now as adults, there is a vast difference in how they behave throughout the day if they get fetch, which is just something that is a part of their core basic needs as a Labrador retriever. Uh, you know, something, you know, every dog is going to have different specific needs, but make sure their needs are met. That is the first and foremost important thing. The second thing that I think is going to be really helpful for calming a puppy um, is going to be getting puppy play. So playing with you is great. Playing tug, playing fetch, those types of things, doing training. It's all good. It's fun. It's important for your dog, but they need time to play with other dogs. And I think it's important to get play with dogs on their energy level. So other puppies probably, as well as adult dogs. One of the great things about having a senior dog in our home as we were raising our puppies is he was able to kind of keep them in line, I guess. And and just show, he just, it truthfully seemed like he was just kind of showing them like, Hey, this is how we behave. You know, when, when the humans are, when that screen comes on and they're watching TV, you just sit next to them and you relax. And, you know, I, I know I'm kind of oversimplifying that process, but it's so important for, for puppies to have experiences with both puppies more so for getting their energy out and helping them calm down, but also adult dogs for just kind of being taught the ways of how to be a dog. So make sure on that 
note that you are exposing your puppy to adult dogs with good behaviors and adult dogs with good manners and adult dogs who you would want your puppy to emulate because they're going to. And the third thing, I mentioned this before, it's training and structure. Really, it's going to help your dog calm down. Uh, I personally love Toto and Impulse Control Games, which is part of Pupford Academy. I helped put those games together. 21 games, they're very less so of like, tell your dog to come and then give a treat. You know, less like kind of training obedience and more on games that you're going to play with your dog. There are ones about you know, helping impulse for waiting for food. Um, there are some about teaching place and settle. There are some about, you know, minimizing barking at the door or jumping up on guests, general impulse control, which again, I think that's what we're really looking for when we ask, when do puppies calm down? We're really asking, when is my dog going to have more impulse control and be more calm and attentive? And so again, you will see some calming as your dog ages especially as they finish growing, but you have to have training and structure. You have to teach your dog what you want them to do. You need to give them clarity as to what calmness actually looks like. And that is so, so important. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you are dealing with the puppy hyperness right now, I'm telling you it gets better. My, my specific experience with my dogs, I did notice a difference when they hit a year old, a uh, year, 18 months old. They definitely seemed to kind of mellow out a little bit. You know, they still had problem behaviors and they still, you know, it wasn't perfect, but I, I did notice that they seemed to be less just kind of like hyperactive and always wanting to be doing something. Um, and so, you know, it's going to depend on the dog, but I really hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, stick with it. If you're feeling challenged by your, your puppy or your dog's hyperness, uh, do these things that I talked about, meet their needs, give them time to play and explore with other dogs. And of course have some training and structure and check out 21 impulse control games. Also, if you have not, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts of this podcast. It is super, super helpful for me, and I read all of them. And other than that, we will catch you on the next episode.